Hello and welcome to the administrative console demo. This is going to be the first demo of a number just to detail the basic features of the administrative console. I'm going to go through the basic file setup that you need to set up the administrative console and go through a little demo just showing you how it works once it's all set up. I'm going to start by showing you some of the basic files that you have in every Rails application and how they might be different if you were setting up the AutoDB application. So first we have our schema. This is just a pretty simple basic schema with categories and items. Um, nothing much special about this. Uh, we're going to move on to our environment.rb. The only special thing about the environment file is that we're going to be loading in the AutoDB administrative console engine. So we have engines.start admin console here at the bottom. Um, in our roots, we're just going to set up a special root that points the admin um, controller over to admin console. And you can use any uh, any controller for this. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at our models, which are going to be pretty straightforward with the exception of a couple of configuration stuff for the admin console. You see we just have a, two little lines here to make the admin console work. Uh, one that tells the list how to function and then any number of configuration options for the page here we're just telling it to ignore position. Uh, application.rhtml the main thing that you need to look at here is just to make sure you have the style sheets and JavaScript tags for the console and I have a little trick here which makes things look pretty. Uh, and then we have the mandatory plugins, which are just engines and the admin console itself. Now let's take a look at how exactly it works once it's all set up and running. So first of all, you'll see that it automatically will generate um, this view if you do slash admin slash item. And here we just put in a new category. Um, and you'll see now we have a text widget and an image widget here. I'm going to pop in a random image. Click Submit. Um, add a new title here to this category. We're going to call it category number two. Hit submit. Now we have our second category. We're going to add an item to the category, first category, which is now you can see there's two new widgets here, date and time. You'll notice that we didn't do any setup at all with the exception of just um, having something in our schema that's called a date or a time. And everything just automatically will appear here as you would expect it to. I'm um, going to add another item over here just so we could take a look at some of the features of how this works when you have more than one item. Set the time here. Okay, now I'm going to sort it, move item 2 up above item 1. You see a little flash indicating that the sorting has been completed. Move over to category 2. Add in an item over here. We'll call it actually we'll uh, try to take a look at what happens if we don't submit anything and you'll see validations are s come up tell you title can't be blank now we have our new item number three go back into category one you'll notice that the sorting has worked item two is still above item one we're gonna edit item two here brings up an edit window editing item two uh... change it hit submit now these are our sorting handles, which you saw a little bit earlier, and the sorting will in fact work. I'm going to add a new item here, which we're going to call item 4. What a surprise. I'm just going to use the default date and time, which is now. Hit submit, and now I'm going to delete. Delete. Everything happens automatically. Things are updated. We stay in our current category. Move back to category number 1. Move back to category number 2. And I'm going to delete category number two. Uh, note that I purposely did not uh, have the items in category number two. You'll note that I did not add a dependent destroy on the model as one might normally do to delete all items under a category because I wanted to show that if you have a category with items that is then deleted, a special virtual none category gets created that will then hold those items.